St. Stephen's here in Harrington, Delaware, for all of you who are watching us on Facebook Live online today. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. It is also what else? <laughs> Come on, Christians. It's December 6th. St. Nicholas Day. Boy. You know, the guy, we turned him into a red-suited, you know, purveyor of goods. Yeah, he was more than that. He was Bishop of Myra. So today is St. Nicholas Day. Yeah, well, whoo. That's your lesson for today. There will be a sermon, yes. Just, just not now. <laughs> You'll hear more later. <laughs> Stay tuned. Holy Ghost Rite 2 is found in today's bulletin and on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer for you at home. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you our hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers the prophets to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field, constancy. The grass withers, the flowers, flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Says to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep, the word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 
85. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have been you have the Lord, Lord, the Lord, the Lord. You have forgiven the iniquities of your people. And blot out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed together. Truth shall spring upon the earth. And righteousness shall come from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And peace shall be a pathway. reading from the epistle. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hasting the comfort coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for those things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish. Regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mac. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. thinking the other day as I was preparing to serve this sermon, you want to see what my sermon looked like, there you go. <laughs> but I was thinking, you know what I miss a lot right now? Singing. Yes. The 
hymns. I really am missing the hymns. I'm missing the Advent hymns. O come, O come, Emmanuel. That's when we use first, you know, we lit the candles on the Advent week. We miss those things. Those are the comforting things for us, aren't they? Hymns talk, tell us a lot. If we actually listen to the hymns, actually not just sang them out of kind of a rote kind of memory, but we actually sang them and listened to the words, we can learn a lot about our lives, about God, about what the scripture is talking to us about. The whole of our liturgy, which I which is why I love about being Episcopalian, the whole of our liturgy, from the beginning to the end, is like poetry. It flows, it gives us the words. We come to this point in the sermon, which is kind of like, you know, breaking the ceremony. But then we have the Eucharist, and we share together. And those hymns, I think the hymns give us something else. They warm our hearts. Just when you're singing alone. Comfort, comfort ye my people, says Isaiah to the people. Comfort, comfort. He brings tidings of God's joy to the people who are in exile in Babylon. They're in distress. God has abandoned them. They sit there wondering, when will they ever return to Jerusalem? We sometimes wonder in our modern age our own sort of captivity right now where we struggle to understand what it is that God is leading, going to lead us into. What do we do as a people of God? A voice cries in the wilderness. And even today, voices are crying out in the wilderness. For us to prepare ourselves, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. If we read the gospel lesson carefully, we see that all of Jerusalem is going out to the river Jordan. All of Jerusalem. That's a lot of folk when you think about it. But they're all going to the river Jordan. To see this what? This guy? You know when he invite John the Baptist to your Christmas party? I mean, wearing camels hair, a leather belt. If I walked into church one day, dressed like that, my hair all mugged up, and pull out my snack of locust and wild honey up here, you would, you know, oh, he's lost it. <laughs> But that's who John the Baptist was. He came preaching a gospel of repentance. Isaiah was preaching a gospel of repentance to those people in Babylon. Turn back to the Lord. Comfort, comfort ye my people. There's that great hymn, I love it. This is why I miss the hymns. Hymn 67. If you ever get home, you got a hymn, you'll pop it open and just read the words. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Speak ye peace, thus saith our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning neath their sorrows flow. Speak ye to Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them. Tell her that her sins I cover, and her warfare now is over. Comfort, comfort. There is a light at the end of this dark tunnel. There is hope on the horizon. And sure, we still have to do things to be careful, but yet there is hope. And there is 
hope for us as the people of God. There are things going on that we don't understand. There are many things going on that I don't understand. But I do know that God has not forsaken us. That in these days, when we wonder, when we wander, I know that God is with us. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Speak ye peace, the set our God. Speak ye peace. Not anger. Not division. Peace. Don't get caught up in the rhetoric. If anything, this season is about us. Stepping back. Examining ourselves and our own hearts. And not the hearts of another person. Where do we go from here? First as individuals, then as a community. What is God seeking from us in this moment? As I said earlier, today is St. Nicholas Day. And I remember I was back in the Abbey, way back. And they said, uh, for some silly reason, they never understood. You know, the United States Army doesn't have much sense anyway. But they sent me to, from Vietnam to Germany. And I go to Germany, and I, you know, I got to be there for like four or five months to do all my time. Why not send me back home? You know, it's Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. I go to New Jersey first. <laughs> That's you know, that would have been better than going up to, no, I sent me to Vietnam, uh, to, to, to Germany. At a place called Linderhof. Trust me, nobody's heard of Linderhof. But it's right near Hamlin. You've heard of Hamlin, haven't you? Oh my gosh, this is lesson number two today. <laughs> Have you heard of the Pied Piper? Yeah. You know? And all the rats came out of town? Wait, good that we don't have one today. Anyways, the rats came out of town. Yeah, that was nearby, Hamlin was. And sure enough, they got a statue of a dude with a pipe and little rats scurrying behind him. But, but I was there, and I, it was December. And I walk out, and they, and they couldn't, afford, I, they didn't have any room at the barracks for me. So I'm like, it's not like Jesus. No room at the inn. So I had, to, I had to stay at a hotel in a little beetle fell or Linda hop there. I walked out my door and I stepped on this big plate of cookies. <laughs> it was December 6th. That's what they do in Europe. Plates with goodies and cookies to remind you that St. Nicholas has come by. St. Nicholas, who did start out being a purveyor of goods for us, but instead was a bishop to the poor and the needy, the orphan, and the widows. People in need. And maybe that's something we can begin to reclaim as Christians today. Instead of this constant spying, buying, Getting back to the sense that this is a season for giving. A season for listening. A season for hope. A season where we are called to comfort the people around us. And to be unafraid to be prophets of our own. Bringing peace to this world is what is desperately needed. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Speak ye peace, saith our Lord. I miss those hymns. But I would miss you more. But hymns are one thing. 
and worships another thing. But you are something else. So stay safe, my friends. As we move toward the new, another season, light is at the end of this tunnel. Hope is on the way. Dr. Fauci said, the Calvary's coming. I like to think of John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> but if anything we learn, if anything we take away from this time, it's that we're all human beings. And we're all beloved of God. And then we are all in need of a little love. It's a hard time for some. It'll be a hard time for a quarter of a million who have already passed on this disease. Their families, those empty spots at the Christmas table. We all know what it's like to lose a love. December is not a good month for my own family. We all know what it's like. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Know that God is with you this time and forevermore. Let's now stand and say together Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God and true God, begotten not me, of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. According to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six found in your leaflet. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alive. For this community, the nation, and the world, we pray for those in the military. Christopher Dawson, Justin Gary, Jamie Grimes, Justin R. Hudson, Russell Knob, Amber Bagley, Jared Farmer, and Bruce Carroll. Oh, for all Lord, people, for justice, peace, and peace. peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of the hunger, fear, and injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, we pray for the following John Macy, Bill Shaw, Shirley Bowden, 
Emma Fisher, Margaret Dean, Ava Louis Vanderlyn, Joe Slavonsky, Gabby Bates, Bernie Falker, Rich Froelich, Paula Spitz, Regina Miller, Lexi Miles, Julia Wise, Kathy Russ, Diana Matlock, Kelsey Malloy. And the deans thank all of us here at church and those praying at home because Margaret had her knee surgery and she is doing very well. For long term and restored health, Dale Matlock and Barbara Mogul. For good health in older years, Gretchen Focus, Molly Rebels, Mary Mills, and Joan Nunn. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For the most reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop. Kevin, Reverend Kevin S. Brown, our diocesan bishop. For Bruce Lomas, our priest. Brian Shepherd, senior warden. Vestry Group, Leticia, Barbara, Minnie, Patricia, Alex, Ralph, and the, the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, All Saints Church, Rehoboth Beach, and St. George's Chapel, Harbison, Reverend Shirley McDay, Rector, and the Reverend Venus Dunlap, Assistant Rector, and the Reverend Deacon Susan Phillips, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all the teachers and students, a few of whom are in school, most of which will soon be continuing their education at home, at least until January. Teachers working from home, that we can hope by the time January comes, things will be more under control and everybody will be healthy. Hear us, Lord. We are mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all blessings of this life. I ask your prayers and thanksgiving for the birthdays of Melinda and Melissa Mills and Larry Dockery. We will exalt you, O God, our King. Praise we, pray your name for we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who could be a trust in you? We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. And together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold us by your Holy Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the goodness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Ascribe the Lord, the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his court.
testimony of war. The great thanksgiving is Eucharistic prayer B, found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer and in today's bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, to make us heirs of him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice of angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love that you may know to us in creation, in the call of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets and above all the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And if you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints you may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, to have the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the power.
eternal God and we found. You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now from the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all of us in, and to keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, the Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you. And remain with you always. I'm not sure if you saw me and Brian as we walked in, but we have masks now that have St. Stephen written all over them. Um, I actually had a friend of mine who started a, this something to do with her son as a craft project, and it turned into a thing. So um, I asked her if she could make us a mask with our shield and our name on it, and this is what they look like. They come in blue, red, or gray. Um, order forms will be in next week's bulletin, and we're going to mail some out for those watching on Facebook. If you'd like to order one, just send us a message on Facebook Messenger or call me or text me. We will make sure you get an order form. Um, we will probably collect money until the end of December as St. Paul's has already hopped on her and has her making masks for their <laughs> congregation as well. So it turned into a, a nice big thing. I showed a prototype to another church and we called her the next day. So. This will be a nice little fundraiser for us. If we have to wear them, why not promote the church at the same time? So if you'd like to order one, order forms will be in the bulletins next week. So thank you.